Hi kids, this is EJ with Reactive Substance, and this is part four of our tutorial showing you how to assemble the kit board that ends up being our four axis driver shield for the Arduino Uno. We have our actual uh, stepper motor drivers. These are the chipsets themselves that are making the whole micro stepping thing possible. And I've got the set, and scooch this off to the side. And this is good. There's the board itself. And it comes with a little set of headers, which is nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to snap these in half, because you need each side, you're going to need eight. Eight and eight. So count them out. Don't assume you're going to snap in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's our midpoint. Break them in half. Should snap nice and clean. And you've got two equal sets. So we're going to employ the same technique as before. Again, make sure that your board is not connected to your Arduino. It's probably not going to do any harm at all, but there's no point in subjecting this to any more heat than it needs to be. So we're going to take our headers. Plug them in, just like before. The long pins actually get slotted into the socket. And so that's there. And then same thing right across. Actually, let me reverse that. Notice here, this follows along with kind of the protocol that we've been using this whole time. I was going to put it in this socket, but then I'm going to get a little rocking motion because there's not as much stability on this side as there is on this side. So, I'm going to use this set of sockets instead. We learn as we go. So, there's our headers in place, right? And we'll take our board and make sure that it is chip side up. For right now, the orientation doesn't matter. But chips come up and slot that on top of your short pins just like that and we're gonna tack I'm gonna put one there and one there make sure it's nice and level look at it from the side like we always do and assuming everything is kosher put the rest of it in place the same thing we're working with chips you want to work quick here We'll make sure that there's enough solder in, but you do not want to spend more time than you need to working on these because the heat travels fast and you don't want to burn out a chip. If you've got a heat sink, if you're comfortable using that, check this to make sure it's square. Nice. And then on the under other side, looks good. Nice and square. And I just nicked the gloves, so I'm going to swap out here. Now these are driving the motors, so there's going to be a lot of heat going through this chip anyways. And that's why you also, so while you want to be quick with what you're doing, you also want to make sure that you're getting enough solder just like when you do the power because there's got to be nice clean contact you do not want too much power going through too little metal or too little solder because that's just another way to generate heat and also a good way of making your steppers misbehave so We've got these little board mount components here. They're tiny. Let me see if I can show you better. No, well, maybe not. Um, but you do have really tiny, tiny elements on this board that you do not want to touch with your soldering iron. So it's safer for me to work from the edge. Use a little extra solder. 
for a little extra reach. No harm there. And I'm going to go back to that one. Just a little bit. And good. Happy with all those except the second one. There we go. Alright, now I've got nice rounded off tips. So I'll switch it around so I can reach it. Already got that first one in place. And the same one. That second pin over is the only one I'm not happy with. Good. So there you go. That's how you put your how you put your driver board together. And again, you know it's going to fit because you had it actually in the socket when you were putting it together. <sighs> Pull it out by the edge of the board. Take a look at it. Nice and solid. No wobble. It's a nice clean build. Now you'd want to do that with two more chips. Uh, or three, if you are planning on using the fourth axis for your second Y motor, depending on your build. But that's one down. So with that said, I'm going to take this opportunity to go through and build my other two boards. One and two, and their headers. Count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I snapped where I meant to, but it didn't listen. So that's unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Take my flush cutters, make sure that I get this one right. So long as they get soldered in place. Again, not the end of the world. Not ideal. Got piecemeal. So long as you don't panic. See that? Not pretty, but not a huge, huge deal. So our stable side is over here. There's six and two. And then I'm going to put it across from the single pin. I'm going to put Caddy Wampus to the other small set. So there we go, in place, driver board, a little trickier, and this time I'm going to make sure that it's level and I'm going to tack twice to make sure the little one's in place and tack the big ones in first. The long sides, the uh, set of headers that has more than one pin, or more than the short pins do. We'll take a look real quick. Oh, lost a little plastic. Again, not the end of the world. Now I'm going to tack the little pins in place. And the single over here. And that'll do. So let's lock the rest of it up.
in, make sure, since we're reaching across, that you've got that extra long lead on your solder. That one's already tacked, but we'll give it a little more. And our second edge. Obviously at this level, you've got to be doubly sure. Talking about little leads, and it does have a solder mask, obviously. But we are probably one-tenth of an inch, maybe even a little less, from this SMD mount component. See, there I go, pointing with that. Should be pointing with this. This is an SMD mounted component. And because this is an SMD component, those pins are just a little exposed on the sides, so you got to make extra sure that you do not touch. Looky, no touch. Only look. Alright. So that's your second. And there you go. Enough solder on there. Put mounted right. You're not going to have to worry about those extra pins. It's not going to be the end of the world. Really shouldn't matter. So, two down, one to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was clean. Same thing, find our solid side. Our headers go in. Shift goes on. Or our chip carrier, I guess I should say, to be technically correct. Make sure everything's nice and flat and flush. And we tack it down. Flip it around, come out the other side. Oh, lost a little tin. You'll have that. That's why you always want to wear eye protection. Always. Add a little bit more to that first tack. And we go from there. There you go. Take a look at those. And aren't those just a handsome, handsome set of our three driver chips for X, Y, and Z. Now when you install these, the board makes it clear. If you look down underneath, well, it states very plainly, uh, driver orientation critical read guide. So you can flip through the guide, but I'm also going to point it out here. If you look down in between your sockets, it says pot, and then it gives a little arrow. Pot, little arrow. Same thing, pot, the arrow is pointing that way, pot over here on your x-axis pointing that way. That is your potentiometer. That is right here, this little round screw. When we get to the calibration step in this whole thing, that's going to become important. But for right now, it's important where it goes. That little round circle has got to go in the direction of the arrow. So, pointing this way here, this is our z-axis. Push that down flat. And our y. Pot's pointing this way. So, make sure that's lined up. Press it down flat. Careful. Good. And it's pointing the same way up here by our power in. And 
And that is it. That is your assembly process. That's how you get all your circuitry together. Now, of course, we've got to mount it onto... Uh, we're going to have to mount it onto our Arduino. And we are going to uh, have, add heat sinks to the chips to make sure that they don't burn, because they will get hot, because uh, they're running a lot of amperage. And if you're running a cut, if you're running a job for a long time, you want to make sure that they're dissipating heat. So, yeah, there you go for now. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Reactive Substance appreciates it, and we'll go from there.